I think that as far as acute myeloid leukemia is concerned, there's, there's really two things. One is a very clear rise up in interest in careful and detailed genomic testing. Now, the aim of that is to provide prognosis, more accurate prognosis with conventional treatment, um, but also develop what we call companion diagnostics, i.e. pick out signatures of the genes that predict a particular response to a particular treatment. Uh, none of that has actually, generally speaking, happened yet, but this is the beginning of it, and the technology is available to do it. So this is certainly something to watch. Uh, similarly, technology development by flow cytometry has allowed patients to be monitored much more carefully or in more detail than we could do with a microscope alone, so-called minimal or measurable residual disease. We now know that if you clear that, then the, the future looks very bright, whereas before we only had a microscope. Um, and I suspect that we'll have clinical trials treating these minimal residuals, these positive, negative patients differently in the next few years. Uh, on the clinical side, I think the big story of the ASH meeting this year is the somewhat surprising result of a very long uh, patient looking at a drug called modestorin uh, combined with chemotherapy for patients who have this relatively common FLIP3 mutation showing that if you add this drug, uh, which is one of the early drugs of its class, uh, to chemotherapy, it has improved survival. Uh, FLT3 mutation uh, occurs in young patients in about 25%. In older patients, maybe about half that frequency. It doesn't prevent the patient responding initially, but what it's associated with is a high risk of recurrence quickly. So the ability of this to prevent these relapses and improve survival, I think, is the AML therapeutic highlight of the meeting. There's no doubt about that. Behind the treatment, it certainly led to a better understanding of how the treatment is evolving and why relapses occur. Uh, it's throwing up targets for treatment, and it's throwing up mechanisms of uh, monitoring how the treatment's going. Um, and I think that could be really quite important. It does require a fair amount of careful clinical corroboration and validation into the future. And I think it's important that we don't make too many assumptions at this, uh, uh, at this stage and we do the clinical studies necessary. But it's certainly interesting and I think it is going to be a very powerful way forward.